Good evening, everyone. And welcome to Sky Observer's Hangout. We're so glad you are with us this evening. My name is Michelle, and I'm the Director of Public Observing at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. And my friend joining me tonight is... Me. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adriana, and I am the Astronomy Educator at the Adler. We've got some other friends with us behind the scenes tonight. You can see already both of them are in the chat. So our YouTube chat moderator is Mike, and answering questions in the chat is our astronomer friend, Geza. So if you see the Adler's name highlighted in yellow, that's Mike. And when you see a name with a blue wrench next to it in the chat, that's Geza, helping us by answering your questions and comments. So ask away. Now, Sky Observer's Hangout is a place for us to gather together every couple of weeks or so to nerd out about the sky. Our goal is to give you practical tips that you can find useful about lots of things related to sky observing. If you want to just watch, totally fine with us. Um, we would love to see your questions and comments, though, in the chat. So feel free to interact with us and with each other. Absolutely. We love hearing from you guys. So to get this show started, tell us in the chat where you're tuning in from. And as an added bonus, tell us your favorite memory of sky observing during the summer. Also, we are turning 91 this month. Uh, so leading up to our birthday, the Adler's birthday on May 12th, help us raise money that will support our online programs like Sky Observer's Hangout. With every donation, we'll continue to bring space science to everybody, no matter where they might be. 25 plus donations can receive a shout out in a collective thank you video that will be shared on social media and in an email. So click the link in the description or the link that Mike is going to share in the chat for us to make a donation and support us. Thank you. And, and as always, uh, you can help us get more visibility for our online shows by hitting subscribe for the Adler Planetarium's YouTube channel right below this video. You can also give us a thumbs up if you'd like. And just to clarify, that's $25 donations. Uh, get that special shout out. So that yes. would be so awesome if we heard that you got that. We got that from Sky Observer's Hangout. That'd be awesome. Um, but we would like to say another special thank you to the sponsor of tonight's Sky Observer's Hangout episode, and that is PNC. PNC, yay, yay you <laughs> are a shining star in the Adler's sky. We really appreciate your support. So... Adriana, do you have a special summer sky observing memory? Well, yes. So um, <laughs> my birthday is at the end of the summer, usually during the uh, Pleiades meteor shower. Perseid. I'm sorry, not the, the Perseid. Thank you for correcting me there. <laughs> um, or the, the Perseid meteor shower. Uh, I went camping once. So we went to a darker sky place and kind of set out a tent and a blanket and laid down and looked up at the sky and waited for meteors to come by. So that was probably my favorite. Oh, that's awesome. Did you see any? Yeah, I counted. I saw 30 in an hour. Holy cow. Wow. It was well, dark. I was going to say that uh, is right away a, a big thumbs up to go into a dark sky to see meteors. Holy cow. Um, well, my favorite summer sky observing memory is popping popcorn on Saturday nights going outside with my family um, and we took the telescope out and that would it's all it's during the summer so Saturday Night Live reruns would be playing um, I was maybe 10 or 11 years old so this is uh, 11 12 somewhere around there so this is like the Eddie Murphy era of Saturday Night Live so it was super fun um, so moms and dads my message to you is uh, if your kids show interest in something, do what you can to encourage that interest. That's what my parents did for me. And I've been fortunate to live my kid level interest for my entire working life. So going out in the backyard with that telescope uh, led directly to me working at the Adler later on. So anyway, so do we have- Very sweet. Uh, yeah, isn't it great? <laughs> um, I mean, I won't tell you about the Perseid meteor shower that I saw from the roof of space camp while the space shuttle uh, launch pad was off in the distance. So uh, I won't tell you about that one. Um, also very cool. <laughs> got a lot of Perseid meteor shower fans. Um, any so any others you want to share? Yeah, well, yes. Mike answered the question in the chat. My best summer stargazing memory is seeing an incredible Perseid meteor shower from eastern Pennsylvania while hiking a portion of the Appalachian Trail. Wow. That sounds so nice. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and see who else is tuning in tonight. Hi, Fred from Chicago. Joe from St. Cloud. Uh, hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah from Andersonville. Um, Ron from Crystal Lake. Joe says comment Neo wise was fun last summer. Oh, that's true. Totally agreed. Yeah. It took We're, me by the so way, long to find it that it was so exciting when I did. Wasn't it? It's very satisfying. <laughs> by the way, we're keeping an eye on comets later this later this year. There, there might be and now don't get too excited. There this will probably fizzle, but there may be one that could be visible in December. Like barely naked eye visible but still we're, we're keeping an eye on it so uh anyway or we're keeping an eye on the people who are keeping an eye on the comet we're not <laughs> um because it's way too dim for us to see it but we'll see we'll see where that goes so hey maybe joe uh, will get another winter time comet uh, uh uh sighting story so we'll Any see others? fingers crossed yeah fingers crossed. um king darius hi from downtown chicago hello <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I am glad that you all are here with us. Let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? We shall. So summer is a great time to get outside and observe the sky. So let's take a look at some constellations that you can search for in the next few months. Uh, let's bring up our favorite free online sky observing resource, Stellarium. You've heard us talk about it. We love it. Mike is going to put a link in the chat to Stellarium so that you can check it out as well in just a bit. And give me just a second. I am no dealing with trying to juggle a screen here. Well, Gaze has got an answer. He says his favorite memory is watching the summer sky wheel overhead while floating in a bioluminescence ocean in the North Carolina Barrier Island Sound. That sounds so cool. Gaza wins. <laughs> Not that this was a competition, it wasn't, but wow. Can you imagine the sky is glowing overhead and the water beneath you is glowing too? So that cool. would be pretty awesome. All right. Well, on that note, um, actually water does play a little part in a little bit of what we want to talk about tonight. So what I'm showing now is the sky tonight at about three o'clock in the morning, but it is also what you will see in early June at about one o'clock in the morning, early July at about midnight, early August at about 10 p.m. and early September at about 8.30 p.m. Um, we are facing east and I'm going to turn the skies. This is our favorite Stellarium website. So we're gonna face north to start. Um, and I'm going to turn on the constellation line. So if you look at the bottom of Stellarium, by the way, this is stellarium-web.org. If you want to follow along, you most certainly can. Um, I'm going to turn on the constellation lines, and that is the leftmost icon on the bottom of the screen. So I'm just going to click that, and there we go. Um, and so we are going to take a look and see where the Big Dipper is right now. If you take a look. There he is right over here. And as Adriana likes to say, it is a fun tropical drink with a straw sticking out the top. Did I get yes. that right? Did I get yes. that right? Excellent. <laughs> All right. So there is the Big Dipper, AKA the pineapple with a drink in it uh, and the big straw hanging out the top. Um, so we've got the Big Dipper. And if you take these two stars right here at the end of the bowl of the Dipper and follow them along, you come to Polaris, the North Star. And if I kind of scroll in a little bit, you can start to see it will show star names as well. So this is a really handy app and totally free to use online. Um, and so then if I kept going and I kind of curved around, so I got to kind of kind of follow the curve from the Big Dipper to Polaris and downward, you come to a fairly bright W of stars. This is Cassiopeia the Queen. Um, no, she does not look anything at all like a queen. She looks like a W. Um, and so uh, I want to point that one out because it's really easy to see. And if the Big Dipper is in the northwestern part of the sky, Cassiopeia will be in the northeast and vice versa. They all circle around Polaris. Now, we're going to go to the eastern sky. So we're going to turn. All I did was I left clicked on the screen and just dragged over and that turned the entire screen. Um, so if you've got Cassiopeia here and you follow up and over, we come to this cross of stars. You'll probably see the cross before you see anything behind it at all, unless you're in a dark sky. But this is Cygnus the Swan. Um, this is also called the Northern Cross. 
And um, so following the long axis of Cassiopeia, down the long axis of Cygnus, and you keep on going, you head down to the south, and we have Sagittarius, the teapot, actually Sagittarius the archer that is shaped like a teapot. This is the his bow, and there's his arrow, and this is supposed to be a half man, half horse. Trust me on that one. It doesn't look like a half man, half horse. Um, we so then imagine. we've got, yeah, I know, great imaginations, right? So then we've got um, over to the right of Sagittarius, uh, we have Scorpius the Scorpion. This one does look like what it's supposed to be. Um, but if you go from Sagittarius and Scorpius back up through Cygnus back to Cassiopeia, you can see that traces the Milky Way. So if you're in a in a sky that's a little bit too light polluted and you can't really see the Milky Way, you can at least trace where it's supposed to be uh, by looking at those particular constellations. So going from northeast to east to south, and then we've got uh, those really bright, nice bright constellations. All right, cool. a couple more things, and then I want to point out our our main uh, object that or our main constellation that we want to talk about tonight. And so here in the summertime, we have this shape right here. This is called the summer triangle because it's in the summer and it is shaped like a triangle. Um, we have three <laughs> bright stars. I know, they're really, really uh, great imaginations here. Um, we've got Vega, which is the brightest star in our summertime nighttime sky. Um, this star right here called Deneb and this star here called Altair. So this is our summer triangle. And again, you can scroll inward and see even more stars listed. You can scroll back outward and it takes away some of the stars so it doesn't look quite as confusing. And you can turn the constellation art on. And also there are various grids and things that you can use. One of the things that we don't really concentrate on too much is this. And that is, whoops, that didn't work. Ha. <laughs> well, what it's supposed to do. We're back. Yeah, what it's supposed to do is just turn the screen red. Maybe it's because I'm sharing. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, don't worry about night mode. Uh, not on my computer. It is not liking it tonight. So it might I, work on yours. <laughs> it might work on mine. What? It might work better on yours. So let's go on. Um, I'm going to go back to the constellations and we want to focus on this little guy right here. This is one of the smallest constellations in the sky. By the way, night mode is just supposed to turn the screen red so that you can use this screen out where it's dark and not ruin your night vision. The problem is you're supposed to be able to turn that and still see the other stuff on the screen. But for some reason that did not work this time. So we're going to ignore that and we're gonna keep going. Anyway, <laughs> this is Delphinus the dolphin, this little guy right here. In order to find him, just look in between Deneb and Altair. Just kind of go right in between there and you'll come to this little constellation right here. And we've got Delphinus the dolphin. Yes. So Delphinus, whose name is a Latin word for dolphin, is small, but given its proximity to other bright constellations, that is what would give you a good opportunity to find it, like Michelle was saying. In Greek mythology, Delphinus represents the dolphin sent by the sea god Poseidon to find Amphitrite, the Nereid or sea nymph, who Poseidon wanted to marry. Delphinus found her and thanks to Delphinus's influence, she agreed to marry Poseidon. In honor of Delphinus's persuasive con conversation, excuse me, Poseidon placed Delphinus's image in the stars. So it's like the dating app of the past. <laughs> there you go. Except it was a real life dolphin, apparently. Um, Delphinus was one of the original 48 constellations compiled by Ptolemy in the Amagest in the, in the second century CE. In Chinese astronomy, the stars of Delphinus are located within the black tortoise of the north. This is one of the four symbols associated with the Chinese constellations. This star group was also recognized by some cultures in Polynesia, uh, specifically the people of Putapuka, sorry, Puka Puka and the Tuamotu Islands 
please forgive my incorrect pronunciation if if I pronounce those incorrectly. Um, that was not meant to uh, be disrespectful. I gave it a try. And I want to recognize the wonderful website Universe Today um, as my source for that interesting compilation of information about Delphinus's part of the sky. Um, I really love Universe Today. So I wanted to give them a little shout out. Excellent. Michelle, do you think our audience wants to learn something else cool about Delphinus? I think they do. All right. <laughs> so I've scrolled in really far to bring up some more star names. Um, we're going to we're going to clue them in on a little bit of trivia. So go ahead. Excellent. So people often ask us where star names come from. Many of the names of stars in our sky have origins in the Arabic language. We're going to talk more about some of the amazing work of astronomers in Islamic cultures to the progression of modern astronomy at our August 23rd Sky Observers Hangout show, so don't miss that. Uh, but there are two star names in Delphinus that have names that are completely unique. 100% unique. Now, Delphinus has five stars with formal names approved by the International Astronomical Union. And the brightest star in the constellation is Rotenev. So let's look. That is Rotenev right here. And another one of the named five is Suolosin, and that is this one right here. Now, those names seem really odd. You're probably going, I don't know what a Rotenev or a Suolosin is. Well, uh, these names first appeared in the Palermo Catalog of 1814, which was compiled by the Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi. Uh, so Alosin backwards is Nicholas, and Rotenev backwards <laughs> is Venator. Thus, these two star names spell out backwards Nicholas Venator. The Italian version of Nicholas is Niccolo. Venator means hunter in Italian, and the Italian word for hunter is Cacciatore. So these star names in Italian are Niccolo Cacciatore. Niccolo Cacciatore was Giuseppe Piazzi's uh, assistant and eventual successor at the Palermo Observatory. It is usually said uh, that Niccolo Cacciatore himself was responsible for naming these two stars, which would make him the only person to have gotten away with naming two stars for himself. However, according to Ian Ridpath, it is equally possible that the names were applied by Giuseppe Piazzi himself to honor Cacciatore, who was his professional heir, or Dauphin. Dauphin in French was the title given to the heir apparent to the king of France. Dauphin in French means dolphin. Either way, having two stars named by him or for <laughs> him, it is unique that Niccolo Cacciatore's name is officially attached to two stars in the sky. Pretty wild. <laughs> Pretty cool. You got to admit, it takes some, it takes some, some guts to, to yeah. do that and then probably hope that nobody notices. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also to Sarah in the chat, um, <laughs> who <laughs> said, oh boy, I've been pronouncing a lot of these wrong for a long time. I was too. Don't worry. No shame. We're doing our best. Okay, so do you want to see Delphinus at the Adler Planetarium? You can do this in the Atwood Sphere. That's what's pictured right up here. The Atwood Sphere is Chicago's first planetarium, a mechanical planetarium that was built in 1913 and came to the Adler in the late 1990s. So it has holes drilled into the metal and then light shines through those holes. So because of that, the interior shows the locations of about 700 stars in the sky at Chicago's latitude. The Atwood Sphere is the oldest operating immersive night sky simulator in the world is crazy. Um, so when we reopen, you might go inside the Atwood Sphere. And if you do, keep an eye out for Delphinus. He is in there. Now, Sarah is also assuming that I was pronouncing those words correctly. So anyway, who knows? <laughs> um, in 2019, we refurbished the inside of the Atwood Sphere by repainting the entire interior. And you can see me uh, in this picture during that process. If you look at the constellation in the picture, what was I working on? There's oh, Venus. There Nickel. 
Um, I was not planning this like with two years notice going, I'm going to show people Delphinus in the future. That just happened to be when we <laughs> took the picture. Um, we painted about 30 constellations with ultraviolet light sensitive paint. And in this image up next, there he is. You can see my terrible photographic ability. Um, please forgive the slightly blur blurry picture. My camera sometimes doesn't do well in the dark. So, but that is Delphinus in the Atwood sphere. And each of those stars holes is numbered so you can see each of those numbers in the picture as well so there you go very cool as rue has stated in the chat delphinus is the finest delphinest <laughs> thank you Rue. oh my goodness wow <laughs> all right all right uh let's go ahead and move on i'm not seeing any questions so all right Last December, uh, y'all might remember Jupiter and Saturn were all over the news as we experienced a really close conjunction of the two planets in our sky. Uh, one of the closest in several hundred years. Very exciting. Uh, we hope that you got to see that. Jupiter travels around the sun a little bit faster than Saturn. So the two planets have appeared to move apart from each other as seen from Earth. Also, Earth has moved around the sun even faster than Jupiter in that time. So for the past few months, Jupiter and Saturn have been visible in the morning before sunrise, and they are rising a little bit earlier each night. Uh, this summer, Jupiter and Saturn will be really, really easy to see, especially in the later summer months and into the fall. They won't be nearly as close to each other as they were in December, but they will still be very fun to observe, especially with binoculars or a telescope. Yep, so let's take a look at where you should spot them because everybody always wants us to, to tell them where they can see planets. So planets are easy to see no matter where you are, any light polluted situation. Okay, so um, I went back to uh, where we are with um, Stellarium. And Great. right now I have it set for uh, tonight or tomorrow morning at three o'clock in the morning, but I'm gonna go forward in time to August. So let's go to... I'm going to go back, hang on, give me just a second. I'm going to go back in time to 10 p.m. And then I'm going to go forward in, in by months to August. There we go. So you can do that too. It's just this little box here in the lower right. You just click it and that'll bring up the date and time and you can set the date and time for whatever you want. And I'm going to stop the time moving because it's magical and I can do that. Um, all right, <laughs> so uh, we've got Jupiter and Saturn um uh in the sky in the east in the uh kind of mid summer time um uh, but i want to specifically go forward to uh august 19th so let me go forward so each night you can see the two planets slightly farther to the west and what do you see coming over to the from the right there we've got the moon and so right around the 19th of august so facing toward the south southeast whoops we've got the moon uh waxing gibbous moon starting to pass the planets as seen from earth so that'll be a great time to actually spot those so if you go from the 19th to the 22nd you go forward and backward as you want from the 19th through the 22nd uh, about 10 o'clock at night go out face southeast and you can see Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon. Um, so Great. I hope that helped you visualize it a little better. Excellent. If you have a pair of binoculars, you might be able to spot some of Jupiter's largest four moons. And if you have binoculars with high enough magnification, you might also be able to see Saturn's rings. Uh, if you don't have binoculars and you're interested in getting some, you can always watch our Skyzervers Hangout show from October 26th, 2020 for what you might want to look for when choosing them. Mike is going to go ahead and put that uh, the link to that show in the chat for us. And all I'm doing is I'm using my mouse, a little roller uh, on the mouse, and I'm rolling forward. And you can do that too in Stellarium, and it'll show you which moons are visible um as well so you might be able to see saturn's and its rings you you might be able to see its largest moon titan um that's usually an easy one to spot with a small telescope uh possibly with a pair of binoculars as well uh, but Excellent. all i'm doing is i'm just going back and forth and rolling toward these and from one night to the next 
um, you can actually see these moons move. Very cool. Michelle, we've got some questions here. Go for it. Um, what are the brightest deep sky objects we can see in the summer with a telescope? Oh, okay. Um, let me think. Let's see. Some of the better ones, uh, well, it depends on the telescope, but uh, if you have a slightly larger telescope, maybe six inch scope or so, um, the summertime sky, uh, especially to the south, um, where we've got uh, Sagittarius and Scorpius. Let me turn those on. So right above Sagittarius, right in through here, is the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And in that general direction is where you're going to find some uh, deep sky objects. And so let's see. Um, uh, there is the Lagoon Nebula and the Trifid Nebula. Um, so, and I always get confused as to which one is which. And if you scroll inward, of course, it doesn't change the name M8. And Adriana, can you do me a favor? And if, do you have a spare? Um, Take a look uh, at what M8 is. Window, yeah, M8. Can do, one second. You'd think I'd have these memorized by now, but I don't. There's 110 objects on that list. I don't have them memorized. I think I think that's okay. M8 okay. is the Lagoon Nebula. Lagoon. Okay, so the Lagoon Nebula right here. Um, so right above the teapot. So the the uh, spout of the teapot. M8 um, is a is a pretty decent one to look for. It's low in the sky, so that's going to dim it out a little bit. Um, but I I live in the western suburbs of Chicago. I could spot the Lagoon Nebula from using that telescope right there last summer. So not too bad, um, not too bad at all. Great. So M8 is, is a good one to go for. Excellent. And I'm trying to think if I have any other recommendations. I would start with that one. That's gonna be hard enough, I think. Um, oh, 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 of course. Um, this'll be kind of small, but if you go up to Vega and you go right in between these two stars right here. So you've got Lyra the Harp right here and these two stars farthest from Vega right here. You scroll inward and you can see this little, this little circle right here. That's the Ring Nebula. It's going to be tiny, um, but it is bright enough to see with a small telescope. Um, so give that a try. Usually what your view will look like is something kind of like that it, it'll be pretty small you might get both of these stars in the same view and so uh, you'll want to look in between them it's going to be small um, but it is it is uh, bright enough to be seen and then a third one whoops sorry a third one is m13 m13 is a globular cluster that is one snazzy globular cluster. Um, a globular is just a humongous collection of stars, kind of in a round or globe shape, um, hence the name globular. That is probably one of my favorite objects to look at in the summer. And it's nice and high up. So uh, if nice you look that. for Hercules, um, you look in between uh, kind of a third of the way in between uh, uh, these two stars right here. But use Stellarium, use a phone app um, to be able to find these. I'd, I'd go for those three. Those are my favorites. Very the Lagoon cool. Nebula, the uh, Ring Nebula, which is a planetary nebula, round, like a planet, and M13 Globular Cluster. Excellent. So we've got a question from six-year-old Saya. What can I see in the night sky on my birthday, August 2nd? Let's Your turn... birthday's very close to my birthday. Yes, well, let's turn the sky to August 2nd. We'll see what yeah. we can see on your birthday. Is How do you pronounce, how do you pronounce the name? Is it Saya? 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 And... If I'm, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but. Yep. Yep, if we didn't get it right, put pronunciation in there. Well, Saya, if mom and dad will let you stay up till, let's dial it up to 10 o'clock. How about that? Maybe maybe we'll, we'll let you stay up a little late, right? So let's turn the sky. Well, look at that. We've got Jupiter and Saturn. Excellent. And so that's over in the southeast. So those will be really bright. You have no trouble spotting them. And... If you go straight up 
straight up from there, you'll see the summer triangle right here. That's that. And we've got Sagittarius the teapot over here. So there you go. Cassiopeia the queen will also be up. The big yep. W in the sky. I can yep. usually find that from Chicago, so I bet you'll yeah. be able to also. Yeah. Any anything else you want to you want to point out to be seen? Let's take a look. Oh, of course. We've got if you go to the Big Dipper, which would be over here in the northwest sky. And then you follow the curve of the dipper, you arc to Arcturus. Arcturus is the star right here. I saw Arcturus last a uh, couple nights ago. Um, it was nice and bright. So follow the curve of the handle, arc to Arcturus. And you might be able to speed on to Spica, but that might be a little low. <laughs> <laughs> but you can at least do that. You can arc to Arcturus, so a nice bright orange star right here. Excellent. There you go. Happy birthday, Sai. If we if we don't talk to you between now and then, happy birthday. Yeah, happy very early birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Let us be the first to wish you happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Uh, I think that Geza and Mike have that last one covered. But I will also add, look out for the moon. It is one of the coolest things to observe. I know it happens all the time, but that doesn't make it any less magical to observe. So yep. um, that was for uh, King Darius's question, what can you see from downtown? There you go. All right. Oh, by the way, King Darius, uh, Jupiter, Saturn from downtown, as long as oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as that you don't mentioned. have the, the buildings around. Um, but if you're in the, if you're facing to the, to the Southeast, no problem. If you go down by the lakefront, you've got Jupiter and Saturn, no problem um, from, from downtown. We see it all the time, so. Oh, we do have one more question here. Yeah. Uh, any good books or guides you'd recommend for stargazing that don't depend on bringing our phones out with us? I've always enjoyed The Night Sky, A Field Guide to the Constellations. Um, Geza has suggested 365 Starry Nights, which I know Michelle is also a fan of. Yep, yep. Um, I actually, let me go, I wasn't planning on doing this. Let me go grab something over on my table over here because I can recommend something that doesn't require bringing a phone. Here's a couple things. One being much more unwieldy than the other. But <laughs> um, this is, and I'm, I'm not sharing the screen right now, right? I sometimes screw that up where I'm still sharing and I'm thinking I'm not. So this is a planisphere and it's made of plastic and you basically set it for um the 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 date and time that you want to go out and you can use this to to find constellations now it won't show planets of course because they move um but one of the things that i really like about this one is it's it's got a white background and so that makes it a little easier to see when you're out in the dark um, mm -hmm. but what you do is you've got the months and the days on the outside ring right? And then the times are on the inside. And you want to pay attention to the PM times. It has the AM times here too, but PM, so it's a little bit easier. So let's pretend you're going to go out um, August 1st at 10 PM. So I've dialed it up for August 1st. See, oops, sorry, at 10 PM. See that? And then there are directions. Sorry, I'm doing this backwards. Um, there's directions on the outer ring here, see it says east. But if you're looking at it going, wait, south, wait, east is over here, how does that work? You put your thumb on the direction you're facing and you hold it up to the sky. Star maps are for the sky, stars are up in the sky, you hold the star map up in the sky. Road maps are for the ground, you hold a road map down here, right? Star map is for here. So that way you face south, everything south is right here in front of you. Everything to the west, is over to the over to the right everything it says north is behind you remember sky is curved above you right and everything to the east is over here so this does not require a phone at all very cool one of the other things you can do is if you want to take a um um a dry erase marker you can take a dry erase marker and mark where the planets are on here and then you can wipe it off when you're done 
Cool. There you go. The other one is just a much more advanced Sky Atlas. Um, I've had this one for years and years, but this is, if you, if you, re whoops, of course I open it to a blank page. That is really <laughs> smart. Um, but it, this is a really, really detailed um, star map. Um, but this yeah. is like, if you're going out maybe with a telescope. Um, yeah. But if you really want to get into it, that's this. But if you just want to go out with a simple piece of plastic, get yourself a planisphere. Excellent. All right. Well, let's keep it moving to our last section here. All the right. last thing we want to show you tonight um, are a couple of resources that you can use on your clear summer nights to try to find some satellites, including the International Space Station. All right. First, there is NASA's Spot the Station. So the website is spotthestation.nasa.gov. And Mike's going to put the link to that in the chat. Now, Spot the Station, uh, this is the page that will come up. It has a database of locations. So you can enter in your, your location or you can even just scroll inward. And the farther you scroll inward, it will give you some spots to choose. It won't have every single town in there, but it's okay. If you don't see your particular town in there, just choose the, the little blue flag, um, the pin uh, locating the closest one to you. Um, so if you click on that, and it will have a link that comes up called sighting opportunities and you want to click it. So I'm in Aurora, closest nearby little flag is Naperville. And so these are the following space station sightings are possible from Friday, April 30th to Saturday, May 15th. Um, so you just go to whatever the current date is, you might see one listed. Notice all of these are at O oh, dark 30. Um, they are really, really early, but it's before sunrise. Um, and so then for you scroll down, there's quite a few sightings, uh, but then after a while, you'll have to refresh the list in a few days or maybe a week or two. And um, you can see where or when to spot the space station. Very cool. So there is another site that you can use uh, and that is Heavens Above. Mike will also put that in the chat um, and Michelle will pull it up yep. for us. I'm gonna pull uh, it up. And there it is. Okay. Great. Uh, so you can use the box to the upper right to walk through selecting a viewing location first, or you can create a free account to save your locations. Then Heavens Above will use that location information to show you ISS viewing information. Just click the ISS link. By the yep. way, um, if an ad box suddenly pops up at any time, you don't have to click in it at all. Just let it go. It'll disappear in a few seconds. Hot yep. tip. <laughs> yep, yep. D don't click on pop-up ads. We, I think we all know that by now, but just don't. Um, so I'm going to click. See? But I, I click the link. I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go. Resist the urge. Resist the urge. And if it doesn't go away by itself, you may just have to click the box away. Let's see, I didn't click it. It just went away by itself. So <laughs> don't click it, resist the urge. Um, all right. So uh, the system will give you a list of space station passes and this list will look very much like spot the station, um, but you can get pretty precise with where you have your uh, location information. Um, and what's neat is you can click on each of the dates. So let me pick this one. Uh, let's pick this one right here, May 5th at 2.45 in the morning. Um, if you click on the date link, it will give you a, a sky map of where to look. And so cool. the outer the outer ring there, that's the horizon. And it will show you where to look and when to start looking and what direction the um, space station is going. Excellent. Um, right. So to help you figure out which satellites to look for, the magnitude column. Um, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. I want to show them the satellite list and... Hang on, hang on, there it is. So the daily uh, predictions for brighter satellites right there. So you click on that 
and that will show you satellites. All right, go ahead. Um, and then to help you figure out uh, which satellites to look for, the magnitude column is the one to pay attention to. The lower the magnitude number, the brighter the object is going to be. Uh, first magnitude is pretty bright. Third magnitude is dimmer. Sixth magnitude is pretty much the limit of human vision. Uh, the light pollution in your area will determine if you can see something with just your eyes or if it's something that you might need binoculars for. Generally, something is um, if something is dimmer than say magnitude three in Chicago or dimmer than magnitude four out in the farther suburbs, you probably will need binoculars to see it. And um, note that you can also choose a minimum brightness. Um, so this is set Ooh. for four and a half. You can actually uh, click a brightness link and update it. And you'll, you might get a shorter list or a list that's at least a little better for your particular location. Um, you can put it for, put it for the morning, you put it for the evening, you can choose the date. Now notice this is this, these are all the, the uh, satellite passes just for tonight. This isn't for the next few days. This is just for tonight in my mm -hmm. area. So there's a lot. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's lots to choose from. And we were sitting outside a few nights ago. We saw two um, in the couple hours that, that I was looking and I wasn't even looking for satellites. I just happened to glance up and like, oh yeah, there's one. Um, so yeah, it's cool. pretty cool. All right. Um, oh, also appreciate Mike's comment that uh, Heavens Above also has a nice Android app. So if you are not wanting to use a computer and want to use your phone, the apps exist and are helpful. Yep, absolutely. Cool. All right, any other questions? before we wrap not, up for tonight. Not that I can see. If you've got any last questions, friends, go ahead and ask them. Yep. But uh, we'll keep an eye out, but otherwise we can wrap up. Well, we are almost done, but just a reminder for everybody, um, there is a partial solar eclipse coming up on the morning of June 10th, right at sunrise for the Northeast United States and it's visible in Canada. If you need solar viewing glasses, we have been mentioning this at the end of most of our shows the last couple months, get them now so that they will arrive in time for June 10th. Our June 9th Sky Observers Hangout Show will tell you all about where and when to look. But if you actually want to see the sun safely that morning, uh, get your viewing glasses now. Mike is gonna put a suggestion in the chat for a company that we've used there are others, um, but there is a company that we've used uh, through the Adler for several years. So uh, if you want to get that and it's visible again, Chicago area, Northeast United States and Canada. So if you're in any of those areas and you want to try to spot that, our June 9th Sky Observers Hangout Show will tell you all about it. Excellent. Um, and we do have one last question from Judy Pearson. Uh, what do satellites look like? Gaze has already got to it. Mostly they'll just look like a star kind of drifting across the sky. They will look like um, an unblinking airplane, but a lot <laughs> dimmer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Yep. And thank you for, for asking that question, Judy, because that is a basic question. And yeah, you need to know what to look for. They will not zip. They will slowly move across. You'll think you're looking at an airplane, uh, but then you'll realize there are no blinking lights. Right. So, yeah. Great. All right. All right, friends. Thank you for being here with us tonight. We hope you can get out this summer and enjoy your night sky. Our next show is on a special night, Tuesday, May 25th at 7 p.m. Central Time, as we show you everything you need to know about lunar eclipses, especially how to see the lunar eclipse that's going to happen before sunrise on Wednesday, May 26th, just the day after that show. So keep sending us your photos and observations via our social media feeds using the hashtag lookup. We'd love to know that you guys are out there connecting with the sky and how you are doing that. So thank you so much for joining us and supporting our programming. We love sharing this time with you. 
We most certainly do. And please tell us, how did we do? Um, we would love to get some feedback from you. Mike is going to link a feedback survey in the chat in just a sec. It will only take just a very short time to fill it out. And if you filled it out before, you know the drill. Please do so again so we can keep track of our improvements. It will help us make our shows even better. And you can send us suggestions for future show topics. And I can tell you, Adriana and I looked at that list just this morning and we took your suggestions and that's how we came up with our topics for shows yes. in January and February. So we actually use them. We <laughs> do use them. So please tell us what you want to see about uh, because we definitely look at that list and that list came directly from your suggestions. Um, so uh, you will also get to that survey via a link in the main YouTube description for the show. Um, so if the chat closes before you can get to the link, don't worry, it is in the main YouTube description and you can access it there. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And please keep looking up. Good night. Have a good night.